Hey guys and welcome back to another Take In Care tutorial. In this video, we'll take a look at the Canvas widget. All right. So the Canvas, along with the text widget, is one of the more you know larger widgets in Take In Care, and that also means that there are more things we can do with it. There's more possibilities. There's more opportunities for you to you know do something bigger. Another nice thing about the Canvas widget is that it can actually be used uh, you know alongside other Python libraries. I'll get into this later, all right? So let's begin. Let's create the canvas widget first, all right? dk.canvas, self.frame. Let's give it a width and a height. Uh, I'll go with 300 by 300, all right? Now, let's just uh, run this right now, okay? I want to show you what it looks like when it, we run the, all right? Okay, look at this. This is this is an empty field, basically, an empty window. But the widget, the canvas widget, is actually right there. You can notice it because by default, the background is, uh, you know, that transparent color, all right? So if you want to use your canvas widget as a more of a whiteboard, which is, by the way, what the canvas widget is used for. It's used for drawing onto it. You, you can draw shapes onto it. You can draw lines. You can even repurpose the canvas widget at the as a paint, you know, you know the uh, the tool, the software paint. You can actually repurpose the canvas, uh, you know, as as that software. All right, but that's a bit tricky and requires quite a bit of work. Here, all right, so yeah, uh, background is equal to white. Let's run this, and there you go. The background is now white. Of course, we haven't actually drawn anything on this, so it's completely blank. So let's get into that. Let's begin. So I want to start by creating some simple arcs, all right? And I'll use this to create something pretty interesting. Just wait and see. Create arc. So I should probably explain the create arc function first. Well, it takes a set of coordinates and then uh, two sets of coordinates, actually. And then it draws a line between these two coordinates and then it sort of rotates this line, drawing an arc. So it takes actually the first parameter is the coordinates, the second is the start point, all right, the starting angle, and the third is the uh, extent to how much you will rotate it. Okay, so I know this doesn't make much sense, but let's go through this slowly. So I'm just gonna make the coordinates parameter here separately, all right. Uh, it just looks a little more neater this way. And let's go with 210 and 250. You'll probably want to, you know, meddle around with these values a bit to actually get the proper effect that you're going for. And by the way, this is x1, uh, x1, this is y1, this is x2, and this is y2. So this is, this is the first pair of coordinates and this is the second point, all right? This is basically where the arc will begin, all right, on this set of coordinates. And this is the coordinate on which the arc will end, all right? So starting coordinate and ending coordinate, all right? Now I'll just pass this in. And then, all right, start. So start means the starting angle. Now, since this is the first arc we're drawing, we'll start from zero, all right? And extent means how much I want to rotate it. So let's say I want to do 170, 170 degrees, all right? Now, the fourth parameter is the fill. What color do you want it? I want to go with red, so we'll do that. Okay, so we've drawn an arc that goes between these two coordinates. Uh, it starts at an angle of zero, and it's 170 degrees rotated, and it's red. There you go. All right. All right, so... Now what? Uh, well, let's go ahead and complete that circle. Uh, I just want to lower this a bit first, all right? Okay, let's copy paste this real quick. Okay, now, uh, I'm going to use the same coordinates again because uh, I, want the, I want the coordinates to remain the same, all right? Because I'm creating a circle, all right? So they all have to originate and end at the same point, all right? So here I'm going to change the start point to 150 because previously 
we drew the circle from 0 to 150, all right? So I'm going to start the second arc from angle 150, okay? And let's see, let's rotate this 100 degrees. Or you know what, let's change that to 120. So what should this be? Blue, all right? And now what's the start point for this one? Well, we started at 150 here and added 120. So now we should go with 270. And the extent, well, we want to do a full 360 degrees, right? So what would make sense? 90, right? Yeah. And yellow. There you go. There's our complete pie chart. Looks pretty nice, if I may say so myself. But yeah, so let's move on to the create line function. And let me get rid of this, okay? Uh, it, it doesn't have angles either, all right? It's just a line, so I'm gonna remove that too. Okay, so there's a slight difference in the coordinates for the create line. Uh, sorry, let me just change that. Okay, so over here, the first pair of coordinates and the second pair of coordinates what the create line function does is draws a line between these coordinates. All right, so let's change these coordinates just a bit. Or you know what? Let's leave them like this first, and run it. Okay, so this is what uh, it looks like. Let's just tweak these values a bit, like twenty twenty, and I don't know, uh, hundred and hundred. Okay, like that. And if you want to draw something straight, you could go with mm, keep the y value the same, I guess. And yeah, there you go. You have something straight. And if you don't want something straight, I guess this would be it. I mean, straight, but in the y direction. So yeah, we can tweak around these values here and change that change the line that gets created, right? And of course, you can create multiple lines. Let's just quickly duplicate these coordinates and just modify them a bit. 50 there, 10 over there. Let me increase that a bit. All right. And uh, 210, 40, 30. All right. Coordinates 1, 2, and 3. Coordinates one, two, and three. Change the colors to blue and green. Okay. Yeah, that's a bit haphazard, but yeah, that those are lines, all right. So I think that's enough for this, honestly. Uh, now let's move on to the create image. All right. So first of all, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of this too, all right? Next, we have to actually import the image, all right? We'll use the photo image ability, all right? tk.photoimage and um, file, right? Is equal to castle.png. Now, castle is the name of the image that I have, that I want to import. And uh, the reason why I've just written the name and the extension is because uh, it's in the same directory as my Python file. So if it's in a different directory, you would want to write a full file path. It looks something like this, right? And xxx user and desktop, right? Uh, this is if it's on your desktop, all right? So yeah, for now, so castle.png is more than enough. So we'll go here then, and we'll put in a set of coordinates, all right? This, this is the starting point of the image, all right? This is the place where the image will begin from, all right? And we'll pass in the image. Now let's do this. Okay, that did not work out. I wonder what's up with that. Hold on. So it turns out the problem I was having had something to do with garbage collection and that the image wasn't showing up because it was being garbage collected. 
So you can prevent it from being garbage collected by doing this. Self-taught master, right, or root or whatever you've named yours, all right, the take inter instance, then you write dot, and then the name of the image, uh, you know, the image object, all right, in our case it's img, and then image is equal to image. Again, this is supposed to be the name of the image object. So if you had named this instead like file, all right, or image file, you would write self.master.image file is equal to image file, all right? This will make the image show up. There you go. Now the image is a bit large, so it's not showing up properly. This takes us to our next section on scroll bars. First, I'll create a scroll region, all right? What this basically does, it sort of defines the width and the height of a scroll region. Now, uh, I like to think of it like this. Uh, the total width of the canvas is now 500 and the height, total height is 500. But at any given point, you can only view 300 by 300, all right? So, okay, well, you'll understand this as we create the scroll bars, all right? So let's just begin with that. But uh, just one more time, I'll explain this. The scroll region is basically the available width and height in which you can scroll, all right? So you have 500 uh, pixels of scrollable width and 500 pixels of scrollable height, right? So yeah, let's do this. And, and by the way, I actually changed this while testing, so that's why the TKs are gone over here. Uh, that's totally up to you, so you can change that back to, uh, let me just show you how. You can do import take enter as tk and then put the tk's back tk.frame tk.tk and tk.canvas okay scroll bar stuff.frame and orient is equal to tk.vertical it's default by it's, it's by default it's vertical, but I just did that anyway because I want to create two, all right? One for the horizontal, one one for the vertical. It'll look better this way. Okay, so fill is equal to tk dot y, and let's give it a side as well, and that's going to be the right side, right? We want the scroll bar to be on the right. Uh, it's tk dot right actually. Mm, okay, now uh, let me just change this to scroll bar Y, okay? Because we'll make two scroll bars in total, so I want to keep something, you know, to differentiate them. Okay, so Y scroll command. And by the way, if you don't understand any of the scroll bar stuff, be sure to check out the scroll bar video. I'll link anything relevant to this video in this in the description below. So, yeah, be sure to check it out. Okay, and self dot scroll bar y dot config self dot canvas dot vi view right and let me just change this a bit all right two hundred and two hundred okay what's wrong with that oh uh, sorry of course it's command all right. Oh, what, what's wrong with this? Self scroll bar, self canvas dot y view. It looks perfectly fine. Uh, silly typo. Okay. There you go. We can now see uh, the castle from top to bottom by scrolling. Now let's go ahead and add one on the X, our horizontal scroll bar. Change a few values here and there, change the orientation to horizontal, and change the fill to tk.x, and put it near the bottom, all right? We want it to stick to the bottom, because that's where the horizontal scroll bars are located. And of course, x scroll command self.scroll bar x dot set. Copy paste this real quick. And soft scroll bar dot x x view. Now let's run this. 
Oh boy, once again, x spoil command, what's wrong with that? Another silly typo. I'm not sure how that's happening. Okay, there you go. You can now completely see this image over here by scrolling around. You see? Pretty neat. So yeah, uh, as promised, I'll give a little explanation on the scroll region now. Well, you see, uh, what you're viewing right now is a 300 by 300 canvas, all right? You can only view 300 pixels by 300 pixels at any given point. But the scroll region, which you can see over here, 500 by 500, uh, this basically means that the total scrollable width and height is 500. You see, when I'm scrolling down here, uh, the, total, uh, the total width and height is actually 500. So I can view 300 right now, and if I scroll down, I can view the additional 200. So if I increase that to 600, then I'll be viewing 300 pixels over here and scrolling down here, sorry, scrolling down here would show me the other 300 pixels, right? So scroll region uh, is something I, I like to think of as the hidden size, the hidden width that you can't see unless you scroll over there, all right? So yeah, that's the end of our Canvas video. And I think we're also done with our Take Inter series. We've covered, uh, we've made 14 videos, all right? And we've covered about 15 widgets in all of them in combined. This doesn't mean that we're done making take inter videos still. This is actually just the beginning because uh, we've only covered the widgets so far. There's still the layouts. They're still teaching, teaching you how to you know, bring them all together and create a proper GUI, how to actually you know, lay them all out next to each other, you know, make them interact with each other, making them look good especially. And there's still, there's still a lot of extra stuff. Like we have a series that I'm planning called take inter extras. It's, uh, it has all kinds of stuff like the color palettes, the font, how to destroy widgets, all that kind of stuff. That's all important stuff that you need to know, all right? And, but yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff in there like key bindings. That's something that I find really interesting, so you should really check that out. By the time you're watching this, I'll probably be done with the, uh, take inter, the other two series, the Take Inter Layout series and the Take Inter uh, Extra series. So I'll link both of them in the description below. So yeah, be sure to check them out and make sure to subscribe if you like this content and you want to see more because there will be a lot more coming out, alright? So yeah, see you in a later video.